<laughs> uh, you gotta work harder. Welcome to Fending America. I'm on a 13,000 mile road trip to meet Finnish Americans and figure out why they want to be here and learn about cultural differences. You'll meet exciting Finns and hear about their journeys in America. Hey, we're in Portland. I've left California and now we're in Oregon. All of these leaves and everything is just magnificent. I haven't seen these type of colors in a very long time. You know, in California, we don't really have the four seasons. Well, at least not in LA. Villa is a former professional snowboarder and one of the most legendary Finnish ones. And I also learned that I should really drink my coffee without any milk, just black coffee. It'll taste better. Um, <laughs> I think it's delicious. It's really soft. First of all, I like that it wasn't served smoking hot. The reason why is the temperature is like, so these cups probably take a lot of the heat. Mm. So a lot of times people forget that porcelain is actually absorbed out of the heat. Wow. Oh, before we go down with the show, it would mean the world to me and it would help me creating content like this in the future. If you could subscribe, smash the like button and maybe share this with a friend. See you next time. For someone who's never heard of you, how would you introduce yourself. I guess I, I used to be a professional snowboarder. That's how I made a name for myself, through snowboarding. I moved to US, Portland specifically. I was traveling out of here for snowboarding for years. I've been in lots of snowboarding videos and magazines. I had sponsors that paid me quite well. I saved some of that money and pursued my uh, obsession of coffee. Yeah, then one day I opened heart. I was still a professional snowboarder when I opened it and I was supposed to go to a photo shoot in Chile. I didn't want to go because the roaster we had, I wasn't satisfied with it. And I found this other roaster in Netherlands that I wanted to buy. And it's a very hard roaster to find. And at the moment I was the only one in the world I could find used. And I wanted to go travel and see it. it didn't show up for my photo shoot that I was supposed to go. And I changed my mind at the airport. I had all my bags and I was at the airport. Checking in the flight and the lady's like, oh, you bag is probably not gonna make on the next flight because you checking in so late. And I was like, actually, I'm not gonna go. And she's like, what? I'm like, mm. And I had this strange gut feeling. Whenever I had that feeling of snowboarding and I would not listen to it, I would get hurt. I don't want to get on this flight. Something is telling me not to. And so I came home. I contacted the people selling the roaster and I booked a flight to go to look at this roaster in the Netherlands. Team manager at the time was like, oh my God, this is gonna affect your contract. I'm like, I don't care. My other sponsors like Volcom was like, oh, you know, that's okay. It's like, great, we'll make you a retirement program. Next three year contract and you get slowly paid less and less. So I kind of eased myself into coffee from snowboarding. But there's definitely a year where I didn't have any money. I was walking to the cafe to work because I didn't want to spend any money on gas. I was trying to take out a loan from a friend with a crazy high interest. So I was completely broke at one point because I spent all the money on the build out of the cafe. My wife sort of helped turn the business around. She came in and helped manage it. I think uh, the reason why we're still here is because of my wife. I, I like the, the gut feeling thing. I think it's something I've been thinking about throughout the years and there are moments where I'm not sure if intuition is the right word or if I believe in that, but gut feeling makes more sense to me because sometimes you just know that, wait, something's off. And I like that you said that, you know, when you had that feeling, you always got hurt. When you snowboard at that level and you're hitting jumps and you make mistakes, you can hurt yourself really badly. And specifically when you're in Alaska, when you're doing things that actually might cost you life if you make a mistake. Um, and whenever I had those feelings, I have to follow them because I'm like, oh, I don't feel good about this. I know I can do it, but something doesn't feel right. And that's usually when I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna hit this jump, or I'm not gonna do that line, I'm gonna do this. And, but there's also this pressure from sponsors, you have to perform. So trying to figure out where is the right line to, you gotta always be on that line. Pushing your boundaries for progression and also like, because you're, you're a paid athlete, yeah. so you gotta perform but you can't perform if you hurt yourself. Do you have any pet peeves about America? 
Um, there's lots of things that annoy me. You just have to th think about what's important for you in life and yeah. outweigh those. The thing is, that you see those things the most when you travel. So when I go back to Finland, I'm like, oh, I'm, I love this. But then there's things that annoy me when I'm back in Finland. I mean, I can't handle really guns. I'm like so not into guns. I just think it's ridiculous that everyone has to have a gun. That's my one of the biggest pet peeves in the United States is the guns. How there's so many homeless people, like there's not I feel sad that that happens here and it's just like a normal thing. Greedy people, there's a lot of greedy people, there's greedy people everywhere in the world. Yeah. So I can't say that it's a specific to the US, but this country is so based on capitalism that it drives me crazy, even though I, I own a business myself, so I'm part of it. But I try, I try to make it change a bit, like when we work with people, for farmers and stuff, to make sure that we pay them well and that our employees are making livable wages. I think we pay the highest of all the roasters in town. Describe how you bounce back from failures. From failures, I don't know, you just get up, try again. I mean, that's kind of, I think that's maybe taught at you a young age or not, or maybe you learn at young age or you don't. I think skateboarding has helped me. Skateboarding is like brutal and I started at a young age and you know, I love skateboarding, but it's so hard and you fail constantly on things. You kind of get into this headspace of what you need to do. You can't think about the trick too much. If you get too much into it, then you're gonna fall. A weird space in your mind you have to be in. If you do that a lot, then you can do it. It's a lot of repetition. And when you start doing that at a young age, you realize that that kind of goes along with anything in life you do. You do something long enough and repeat it over and over, you become professional at doing that one thing. What makes Finnish people unique, if anything? The culture, when you grow up in Finland, you're, it's, it's, the weather is very extreme. You go from a very cold, dark winter to a summer where the sun is out, you know, almost 24. And so people are sort of shy first. Once you know them, they're kind of like, I feel like they're just like your friends or like they're just, very reliable people. There's a stubbornness, and I think that's like engraved in the culture. Some people, you know, become very successful by having that in them. Do you think that separates us from the Danes, the Norwegians, and the Swedes in a way? Yeah, I mean, I think people, Finnish people are very direct. So there's uh, no small talk. You know, people get offended if I say something and I'm too direct. So I have to be careful how to approach things and that I, that is very tiring because I can be like, oh, I gotta talk to this person about this thing that they're doing and I don't want them to do that at work. And I think through my head, how am I gonna talk to them about it? And it never comes out the right way. I'm always like, hey, can you talk to him about this instead of me? So my wife does a lot of the talking in those situations. I can't be half the business owner and not address problems when they are, occur. I guess I was raised with very little BS, it was just like straight to a point. You're doing good or you're not doing good or fix this or whatever. I guess that's a part of the culture that can sometimes backfire, but also it's easy because there's no miscommunication. You know where you have them. You're not, you're not, you don't think they're up to something because you can see kind of like, that's how they feel about it. What do you think makes you fit finish? I took my DNA, I'm like, 99% finish. <laughs> <laughs> or more, but, more specifically, are there traits in you, know, you that it, you really see that I'm finished because? I mean, there's some social awkwardness that I can't get away from. I'm like, God oh, damn, that's that's my finish side. I'm a straight shooter. Like I will tell you how things are, I have no bullshit. I do, I don't know if it's a finish trait or whatever, but I don't mind extreme things. So like, I'm not talking about like extreme sports, but like jumping in the snow, at, uh, naked in wintertime, no problem. Jump, jump in a cold lake, I don't care. Whereas I have friends that are like, oh, I would never do that. That's, that seems like straight up like torture. I think all of that just makes you finish. Yeah, I don't think I have, I mean, I drink coffee, maybe more coffee than I should, but I try to be conscious of how much I drink. And yeah, and I like alcohol, probably like most Finnish people. As a, as a business owner, how do you define success in your specific role? with your employees? I always can do better. I mean, obviously, this is, you have to be able to also know when you make a mistake. You should never try to be above anyone. Someone has to be in charge. Unfortunately, I'm not really good at being in charge. If you can have a good balance relationship with the employees where 
the boundaries are clear, people feel safe at the work place and the business functions, I think that's success. What are some steps that I could take to be in the role you're in uh, sometime in the future? Well, whatever you're doing, it has to be, um, you know, sp specific in that field that you have to have, like a standout. You can't, you should never open something because something's, you know, something is popular or people doing this. Oh, we should do this because, look, a lot of people are doing this. Like, there's all these dispensers in Portland. It would be the worst idea to open one right now because you would not be successful. There's too many of them. But I think if you can stand out in the field that whatever you're doing, in and the product or whatever you're doing is good, then half the battles right there. And then the other part is that you can't really be constantly looking for like, how do I make more money? That sometimes actually drives, just doesn't work. You sometimes have to take risks and have to be willing to invest money in something that might not make money for a while. That I think has been maybe my luck in the, this business is being like not caring about the money because that doesn't really drive me. It's more like I want to be able to produce something that's really good and be proud of it and look at it. Uh, that drives me, not the not how much money I have or how much I get paid or whatever. If you can do whatever you're doing and you can be doing it and enjoy doing it and you know that you have to have X amount of time to put into it, then you're probably going to be successful. As a founder, um, it is very lonely and sometimes very you know dark times when you're running out of money or you're back against the wall as, a, as an entrepreneur. Do you have any tips on how to you know keep going and, and believe in yourself when when, it, when <laughs> everything's falling apart and, and you just need to find a way to make it work and not fire your entire uh, staff and uh, close close shop? I mean, there are times that it be, it's been so tough that I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I don't know if I'm gonna lose everything. And you just can't stop. Uh, you just gotta keep going. And you gotta remember that all problems, every, you know, every obstacle you can get around or over it one way or another. And sometimes it can be really overwhelming when it's a big one. And we've had a lot of big ones where I'm like, wow, I'm never gonna get out of this. This is it. And then, you know, sometimes all you need is a little bit of luck and then that might spark something else and then that can help get to the next place. And, you know, if, if it doesn't work out, then you just, that's another thing. It's like you, you don't have to do anything, but if you want it to be successful and keep going, it you can't give up. I'm going to throw out 10 words okay. uh, and whatever comes to your mind, uh, just say that into the camera and then we're good to go. First word, blue. Sky. White. Uh, clouds. <laughs> Snow. Sauna. Uh, good times. Cecil. Uh, tough times. Black. Uh, dark. I don't know. <laughs> Green. Uh, uh, environmentally friendly. Coca-Cola. Uh, gross. The Matrix. Uh, future. Finland. Uh, comfortable place. Love. My family. And uh, what would you say to the next generation of entrepreneurs? <laughs> uh, you gotta work harder. <laughs>